Yeah. 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 Praise God. Get much sleep Jesus. last night. Thank you, Lord. Try to go to sleep, and every time I doze off, something happens. Bless God. Uh, Bless you, Jesus. So I'm a little tired this morning. But I'm blessed. Amen. I'm just blessed. Thank you, Jesus. Good to have my great friend from Lowe's here this morning. Everybody give her a good hand.
six month with her who was called barren. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Amen. Impossible is beyond the bounds of possibility. Not possible, unable to exist, happen, or accept. How many know with God, nothing shall be impossible? Amen. If you know the man, Jesus Christ, nothing shall be impossible. Mary didn't know the man, so nothing can happen. But when the Holy Ghost overshadowed her, how many knows when the Holy Ghost overshadows you and you feel that presence, how many knows nothing is impossible? When the glory of God comes over you, how many knows there's a change coming? When you start feeling that spirit all over you, how many knows you can, you can ask for anything you want and it shall be given unto you because you know the man. Elizabeth was old and barren in years. She couldn't conceive a child. But the angel come to her husband and spoke to him and said, She shall bear a child. Elizabeth shall have a son. And in his disbelief, God tied his tongue until the baby was born. And this is why the Bible says, With God, nothing is impossible. He can make a way where there seemeth to be no way. He can make a, a way out of no way. I may not preach long this morning, but thank God for the Holy Ghost. Thank God that He overshadowed me and the weapons that I face in my life because of the anointing overshadowed me. Because of the glory of God that overshadowed my body, nothing shall be impossible. Nothing shall come against me. Nothing shall hurt me. Nothing shall take nothing away from me because of the power of the Holy Ghost and because of the mediator, the man, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank God for that overshadow. Have you ever felt God's presence all over you? That's the time to ask God for something. There was a man that sat at the pool. He was crippled. At the Putin of Thesda, I think was the name of, and the angel come ever so often and trouble the water. And this guy had been sitting there for years. And every time that water would trouble, somebody would jump in before him. And they asked him, said, Why why ain't you got your miracle? He said, I have no one to, to, to give me my, to help me in the water. But today, you get your miracle. The angel troubled the water. There was a stir, and people got their miracle. When you feel God's presence stirring on the inside of you, how many knows that's the time to get what you need from God? When you feel that presence all over you, and you feel the goosebumps, and you feel the hair standing up on your back of your head, take a shot at it and ask God for a new car. Take a shot at it and ask God to give you a miracle. Take a shot at asking for anything you need because the man has dealt with you. Amen. Let us get the man. Yes. Amen. I'm not going to preach long, but it says nothing that is impossible with God. Amen. Are you facing a situation in your life today that seems impossible? I am. But when I read the word of God, I realize I've got the man living on the inside of me. And because of the man, that mountain that I'm fixing to climb seems like a molehill. That valley that I'm fixing to go down in seems like there's nothing to it because I know the man, Jesus Christ. Mary was highly favored and blessed among all women. She was chosen to care for the sweet name of Jesus. To care for that sweet son. I'm chose to. I'm chose to represent the man. It's Christ in me, the hope of glory. When you see me out on the street and you see my head hung down low because I'm going through a storm, I'm not giving you no faith. But when I show the man in me, how many knows you get your faith built up? And when your faith gets built up and God moves on you, nothing shall be impossible. Because of the man Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says because of the anointing, the yoke was destroyed. We need to start praying that God visits our service more. I've been in here and I've been back here on the drums before and I and I can look across the audience and just be so foggy from the glory of God. 
and it's been a while, but I believe we're fixing to start seeing it again. I believe God's fixing to start making a way out of nowhere again. Because we build our faith up. What moves God? That's not going to whip me. But I preach what God put on my heart. Mary had the Holy Ghost to overshadow her. She said, How could this be? Because I know not a man. How can you face your situation if you don't know the man? How can you face that impossibility if you don't know the man? If you know the man, nothing shall be impossible. Amen. Hallelujah. How many loves the Lord this morning? Amen. 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 Jacob had a vision. That's an angel gave her come visit Mary. I'm not getting off my message. I'm not telling you. Jacob had a vision of the ladder going up to heaven and angels ascending and descending. Because we got the man inside of us, we need to start walking in Walmart and start looking for our angel. We need to start waking up in the morning with a different attitude because you have the man and start possessing your blessings. Start claiming I've heard them preach, this ain't name it, claim it, yes it is. If you need it, and if it lines up with the word of God, you name it and claim it, and it shall come to pass. Why? Because the man, Jesus Christ, and with God, there's nothing that's impossible. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I need a miracle this morning. I need a blessing this morning. I don't have to leave here like I can. Because the mediator, the man, Jesus Christ. How many's got the man, Jesus Christ? Thank you, Jesus. Nothing shall be impossible. The impossible is beyond the bounds of possibility. I told that Sunday school class this morning. I said, I'm not going to preach long. I preach what God put in my heart. I said, try your faith. Like I told him, I said, step on that water a little bit. We need to start trying our faith. What if he sink? What if he did? They always preached about Peter sinking, and they always preached about how he got his eyes off God. At least he got out of the boat. I don't know how far he walked, but he walked far enough that he got recorded in the Bible, and he got far enough to build my faith. And what was he going to? To man. So we need to start increasing our faith. I wanted to preach on faith this morning, but God would let me. What I preached on faith, I got excited. But we need to increase our faith because we have the Holy Ghost. Heaven knows nothing shall be impossible. Nothing shall be impossible through Christ. And I'm going to tell you something today. I'm going to make it. I got some situations in my life. It ain't the first time I faced it. I hope it's the last, but if it ain't, I'm still going to serve the Lord. Amen. You know, we may not understand the trials and the fire trials that we go through in our life, but I was praying the other day and I said, God, I don't understand why I had to go down some, some paths again. And I've always got up here and said, no matter what happens, I'm going to serve God. And God spoke in the Spirit and said, I'm seeing if you're still serving. Guess what? I'm still here. I'm still here. Because I've been overshadowed by the Holy Ghost. This mountain that I'm fixing to face, it's not impossible. I'm coming through. And when I come through this time, God blessed me double last time. I believe he's going to bless me ten times this time. Because I'm going to keep the faith. I'm going to hold on to the man. He's a friend that's closer than a brother. My brother may fail me. My brother may leave me. My sister may give up on me. She may leave me. But let me tell you, your husband may leave you. Your wife may leave you. Your mom and daddy may not go. They may not care for you. But there's one friend that's closer 
something to brother. His name is Jesus. And if you got healed and you start feeling him moving in your life, how many knows that's the time to ask God for something? I always tell you about it. Getting in the shower and start singing, and you start feeling the anointing come on you. I mean, that's the time to ask God for something. Let me try singing in the shower later. I have. I start feeling the Holy Ghost all over me. I start feeling His Spirit. And from now on, I just realize when I start feeling that overshadowing and I start feeling His presence, I'm going to start asking for God right then. I don't care if I'm in Walmart. I don't care if I'm in Western Sizzler. I don't care if I'm in Lowe's. I don't care where I'm at. When I start feeling that presence, I'm going to start asking God for my miracle right then. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. When the glory comes down, blessings come with me. Here we took a woman that never had a child. She was a virgin and never been touched and didn't know a man. But when the Holy Ghost came down, and you know, she can see a man child, his name was Jesus. When the Holy Ghost comes down, I mean those miracles can take place. Yes, and you know the story, John, John the Baptist, Elizabeth was Mary's cousin, and Elizabeth was born, uh, John the Baptist was born first. And when, when Elizabeth told, when Mary told Elizabeth about her being in the family way with Jesus, John leaped in her belly and was filled with the Holy Ghost. That's exciting. Because the, of the overshadowing, something happened. Because of the man Jesus Christ, something happened. I don't know why I had to preach it this morning. I don't understand why he put me in this, to this scripture today. But I want to tell you today, if God has moved up on you and you've been baptized with his spirit, he knows you blessed and highly favored. Hallelujah. And you've got to get your faith high enough that because of God and through God, nothing's impossible. I'm going to mark this day down. And a year from now, I guarantee that I shall be on top again. Yes, I always told me you can't keep a good man down. You can't knock a good man down unless God allows it. And if God allows it, how many knows there's a testimony coming out of it? And I've got a testimony. If God be for me, who can be against me? church this morning about how God spoke to my kids to get out of the house before he sent, sent that tornado and he wiped it out. But I was talking when I went to the station, the gas station to get me some water and I was talking and, and, and to that lady. She said, where have you been this morning? And I said, I've been to church already. And she said, why don't you go to two churches? And I said, well, I'm just, you know, teaching Sunday school at one and I'm going to my church. And I said, you know, lady, she said, why don't you do that? You know, she's asking all kinds of questions. I said, because they want me to tell them now my testimony about the tornado. She said, you know, I remember that day well. She said, I was down at DFM in Stevenson. And she said, I seen it coming up the road. And I seen it get up next to the, the paper mill. And I seen it cut up towards the river. And you know what I told her? I said, it's headed right to my house. It changed its path in Stevenson to come to Greg Gillum's house. Because why? Because I got right here on my face and I asked God. I said, God, I'm about to lose everything. I need your help. I need a miracle in my finances. And God directed that storm right to my house. And every dime that I owed in five seconds' time was wiped out. Can you imagine that L5 coming up all the way from Tuscaloosa with Greg Gillum in mind? Well, that's impossible. No, it ain't. I felt a witness on that. When that storm was formed, it was formed for me. When that storm was spoken in existence, it may have had to come from hundreds of miles away and gain some steam to do it miracle. But how many knows God could have done it just for me? Because I got a miracle out of it. And I got tickled because it was coming up Highway 72. And she said it just kind of like turned and went the back way. And God spoke to my spirit right there and said it was headed to your house. It was choosing the path that it needed to take to save your boy's life. Because if it would hit it at any other angle, I mean, those my kids would have been dead today. But because the path was chosen in the way it came about, I mean, there was not a scratch on my kids, not a hair on their head was harmed because the Holy Ghost moved that storm in my direction. And because I know the man, I can stand here with a testimony to live. So 
that storm that's forming in your life, it may be headed right toward you. But how many knows there's nothing can happen to you unless the man allows it to happen? Amen. Right. In your impossible situation, it's possible now. Yes, it is. Praise God. Because with God, the Bible says nothing is impossible. You need your miracle? You can have it. You need your financial miracle? You can have it. Anything that you ask God for, if you ask in faith and not waver, because if a man wavers, he need not even ask him anything. But if he asks in faith, not waver, heaven knows it shall come to pass. Now, you can't ask if you're a married man, you can't ask for another married man's wife. God ain't going to answer that prayer. It's got to line up with the Word of God. Your prayer needs to be pleasing to what He and His will is. Yes, up with the word of God and you're a child of God and you ask God for it. This Bible says it shall what? Come to pass. Why? Because the man Jesus Christ. Let me love the Lord this morning. I know I didn't preach all this morning. I don't want